What's going on basketball world? It's just us and today I want to talk about the world of rumors. Specifically, rumors that I've seen circulating about the future of the Raptors point guard position. Yeah, I'm talking to you my dude. Now while most rumors are fake or just reaching, this one does have some good points to it. Point number one, yeah, Kyle Lowry is getting older, he's 34 years old, and his productivity is bound to decline. Number two, the Raptors should be looking for their future point guard because Lowry is going to decline. And number three, this is probably the most important part that nobody is mentioning, the Raptors already have their future point guard. You may know him as Freddie Vandelay, Mr. Bet on Myself, Fred Van Vliet Sr. And I'm going to show you why he is worth every penny. But first, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification button for more sports and basketball videos. Back to Freddie. The Raptors have an extremely important offseason ahead of them. Three of their key rotation pieces are going to be unrestricted free agents, Fred Van Vliet, Serge Ibaka, and Marc Gasol. On top of that, they have guys with less significant roles in Rondé Hollis Jefferson and Chris Boucher, also free agents. And on top of that as well, one of their rising young players, OG Ananobi, is eligible for a contract extension. It's going to be a busy offseason for the defending champs, but I hate to break it to you, they can't keep all of them. There is a clear direction that the Raptors are headed. Continue to build on the success of the 2019 championship by retaining most of their core, developing young players already within their system like Terrence Davis, OG Ananobi, Chris Boucher, and Matt Thomas, and aiming all of their money towards 2021 where they could potentially attract <coughs> Giannis, a superstar in a loaded free agent class. <coughs> Giannis, who may be interested in moving somewhere else to fulfill their goals of a championship. <coughs> Giannis, I'm sorry, there's, there's something giannis -y about my throat. Could I have some tea, please? That's why trading Lowry and drafting LaMelo Ball just doesn't make sense. The Raptors aren't looking to take a step back in the process. They want to continue to contend right now. That's why the Raps have been planning to make Fred the point guard of the future this entire time. The point has always been for Fred to learn from a savvy floor general like Lowry and become the next guy up. And honestly, so far so good. Uh, Kyle Lowry, Toronto Raptors. Uh, Fred, how does it feel to be um, a world champion? Uh, it's unbelievable, man. It's unbelievable to have guys like Kyle Lowry on your team who, who step up and go for 15 in the first quarter, you know, but he should have had 50. Uh, but, you know, he slowed down, so I just want to come out there in the second half and bail him out. Now, some of you may agree with all of this, but still be apprehensive with the idea of paying big money to a guy like Fred. But I'm going to give you three points as to why you should 100% bet on Fred Van Vliet. Three points for each claw finger on the Raptors logo. Point number one, constant improvement. Van Vliet has not stagnated once throughout his career. Every single year he has played basketball, he has improved on an area in his game. Even through college with the Wichita State Shockers, he went from a bench player to a starter and then to a star. And he did all of that while helping his team win. Then he went undrafted, skipped out on G League contracts, bet on himself in the summer league and scored a multi-year deal with the Raptors where guess what? He constantly improved, again. In his first year, Freddie spent most of his time with the Raptors 905 alongside Pascal Siakam. Not only did both of them improve drastically, but they won the G League championship there as well. In his second year, Fred finally became a part of the rotation for the Raptors, becoming an integral part of what is known as the bench mob. He boasted some ridiculous numbers. Fred that season was ranked fourth in net efficiency per possession, right behind Steph Curry, Eric Gordon, and Chris Paul. And on top of that, he was the only full-time bench player in the top 20 in the league for plus minus. What that all means is that Fred is effective when he has the ball and he knows how to help his team win. Surprise, surprise. In his third year, Fred's bench role grew, becoming the number one facilitator and floor general when Kyle Lowry wasn't on the court. And the Raptors loved running a two point guard lineup of Fred and Kyle in fourth quarter minutes. Now this was the championship year and we all know how important Fred was in that run. Defense. now the top end talent is great but the depth isn't even close Van Fleet does it again banks it home and draws the foul Kinney in the game deflected by Lowry nice pass ahead from Gasol Van Fleet to Siakam oh what a slam and they sub the Baca in for him Van Fleet gets a wide open look pucks it in Fred Van Fleet 
tonight. A miscommunication on switching. He gets a wide open three. 12 huge fourth quarter points for Van Fleet and the Raptors. So through the first three years of his career, he improved, got better, and by the time that it got to the point where the Raptors needed to rely on him to win, he came up clutch. It's exactly the type of trajectory that you'd want out of a young point guard. Three years and he constantly improved throughout them. And in his fourth season, guess what he did again? Improved. With the departure of Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green, Fred assumed the starting role for the Raptors alongside Lowry and absolutely thrived. A lot of people talk about Siakam's improvements and the leaps that he's made each year, but you could argue that Fred has made similar leaps just on a different scale. Let's compare his stats from last year. Last year, 11 points per game. This year, nearly 18. Last year, four and a half assists per game. This year, nearly seven. He now also averages one more steal per game, is shooting better, and is doing so in just seven more minutes per game. If Fred wasn't constantly in and out of the lineup, he would be a borderline all-star. There is no debate to that. Point number two, relentlessness. This is something a lot more intangible than statistics, but it's a common trait that Lowry and Fred both share. They are both extremely hard workers. They play like they have a chip on their shoulder and they play as if they have something to prove to the world. They are highly intelligent on a basketball court and know how to run an offense. Point number three, the big picture. They always say that money talks, but let's break it down. This is currently the Raptors payroll for the next five years per basketball reference. Now I mentioned that the Raptors goal is to keep max space in 2021 in order to sign a certain freak, but there is a lot of moving parts. Gasol is a free agent next year. Ibaka is a free agent next year, along with Fred. Rondé Hollis Jefferson and Chris Boucher are also free agents, and they can also extend OG Ananobi's contract this summer if they wish to. You can probably get away with signing Boucher and Hollis Jefferson to short-term deals that wouldn't necessarily hurt your cap in 2021, or you could let either of them walk and find filler players to fill up those minutes. The big kahunas are Gasol, Ibaka, OG, and Fred. Gasol, a 35-year-old aging veteran whose glory days are definitely behind him, still has been a difference maker for the Raptors. He's their zone breaker and is still one of the best passing big men and defending big men in the league. Because of his age and recent injuries, you can probably get Gasol for cheap and retain him. Ibaka, on the other hand, is younger, has had a terrific season taking up all of Gasol's usage due to injuries, and is probably going to demand more money in a weak free agent class. As for OG, he's made some incredible strides this year, both offensively and defensively. He's become an integral part of this season's team and the overall direction of the Raptors moving forward. John Hollinger and Blake Murphy recently discussed Ananobi's contract, and to sum it up, there are really two options. Let Ananobi become a restricted free agent in 2021, try to find a max cap space quality player in free agency, and afterwards use the bird rights you have on Ananobi to sign him on a deal that would work somewhat in between the range of 17 to 22 million a year. The other possibility is that Ananobi is used as a part of a trade package if Giannis is indeed traded by Milwaukee, but don't worry Raptors fans, that's not likely. But where does this all leave the man the video is about? What about Fred? Well, there are a ton of suitors for Van Vliet this offseason, with teams like Detroit and New York who lack depth at the point guard position being the front runners to throw max money at him. Fred has been reported numerous times saying that he would love to stay in Toronto and that he would even look into a short-term deal, but let's be real. Fred is smart. He seems to understand his value, and he's not going to shortchange himself, especially in a free agent class that ranks him high. There's no way to beat around the bush. This free agent class is weak. When you chalk up all the beautiful player options that certain players have, or just all the restricted free agents that are in this class, guys like Ibaka, Fred Van Vliet, and Gasol, who have championship experience, are perfect players for a contender. So let's go back to our payroll. Let's say the Raptors lock up Gasol for a one-year, $10 million contract, and they re-sign Boucher to be Gasol's backup for about two years, $6 million. Right now, Van Vliet is expected to sign from anywhere near $20 million to $30 million, depending on the cap. The Raptors can still re-sign Van Vliet as long as it's around the $20 million mark and not the 30, and still keep cap space open for a max slot in 2021. Also, because the Raptors have Van Vliet's bird rights, they would be able to go into the luxury tax even if they wanted to. There are so many moving parts in the NBA salary cap that just thinking about it makes my head hurt. But there are two things that are absolutely clear. Van Vliet can be re-signed and the Raptors can keep max space open for 2021 if they wish to do so. But there are also some concerns moving forward. 
The first area of concern is the fact that Fred VanVleet has not been able to stay healthy. Last season, he missed a good chunk of time due to a thumb injury, and this season, while the injury bug seemed to hit every Raptor, it also hit VanVleet, missing stints here and there, which obviously didn't help his case of being an all-star. The second concern is that he isn't necessarily the youngest. He's 26 years old and has a good amount of miles on his body. And the third area of concern is his area of improvement, which is the mid-range game. Fred is not the greatest mid-range player. This season, he shot 18% from five to nine feet away from the basket and 25% from 15 to 19 feet away from the basket. This could also be a good thing. The game is trending towards eliminating the mid-range anyways, but still it's an area to improve. The fourth area of concern is more general looking into the future. How much better can Fred Van Vliet truly get? Siakam's ceiling is without a doubt higher than Fred's and there may be the argument that Fred's probably done all the improving he can and that if you force him to become a number two option, increase his usage and his minutes, you won't necessarily see the same amount of return. I'm not too sure about that argument. It does seem a little faulty. Injuries, I understand. Age, I get. But improvement has been a staple in Fred Van Vliet's career, so why should he stop now? There is another big elephant in the room when it comes to the future of the Raptors and in general, every NBA team. With the NBA losing money in China and the suspension of the season due to COVID-19, there will be a trend down in cap space. Per Adrian Wojnarowski, the cap could potentially drop as low as 97 million compared to the 109 million that it was supposed to finish at this season. The NBA will probably not let it have that dramatic of an effect and use something called cap smoothing to deal with the repercussions of the economic collapse, but still, this hurts the Raptors' chances of having the money to sign and retain their players. Just to update this section of the video specifically, there was a report by Real Jam today saying that the NBA salary cap for the 2020-2021 season could decline by as much as $30 million. So that $97 million total that Adrian Wojnarowski reported earlier this month could actually decline by, let's say, about $20 million. It hurts players mostly, but it also hurts teams in being able to attract the free agents that they want to and potentially even retain their players. Uh, it, it focuses on more of a short-term deal for players that they're looking to resign, and that's how it affects the Raptors as well. But not only does that hurt the Raptors, it hurts other teams as well. Now those other teams can't throw a $30 million contract at Fred Van Vliet, and Fred himself understands that. In a conference call with the media, Fred accepted the fact that there's going to be some stipulations on what happens to his contract this summer, specifically because of COVID-19 and what's going to happen with the cap. Because he understands that, I'm sure he's going to be more flexible, but at the same time, he's smart, he knows what he wants, and he's going to go for the best case scenario, like Josh Lewenberg said. All in all, Fred's impact on the Raptors has been immense. I'm 100% confident in saying that without Fred, the Raptors would not be champions today. He has constantly improved, he has become entrenched in the culture, and is a key piece of the Raptors moving forward. The future is supposed to be Van Vliet, OG, Pascal, Terrence Davis, and a certain player that may want to move his talents to the north. But it all starts with this offseason, re-signing one of Ibaka or Gasol and trying to keep Fred and OG content. But Fred is the key piece in that puzzle. And not re-signing him would be a mistake. You get your future point guard, you still have money to be able to chase another superstar to pair alongside Siakam, and you can contend for a championship right now. So Raptors fans, what do you think? Are you in? For more videos like this, like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification button for Lingo Sports. We have UFC, NBA, NFL, and soccer content weekly. Have a good one.